Hey everyone, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Good morning, Happy New Year. I hope your new year is off to as wonderful of a start as ours is. I'm going to wait a little bit here and see if we can get some people on and joining me. Um, we are going to continue to do this throughout the year, Wednesdays at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I'm going to jump on here and we're going to have some live conversations. I really enjoy and have enjoyed greatly getting to know so many of you. And uh, I just think it's a great time to get perspective and, and share things. Good morning, beautiful Vicki Lynn. Happy New Year. But I really want to focus this year on getting to know you folks and discussing some of the hard topics that we all go through and struggle with. And uh, right now, I think everybody's uh, on the brink of the new year. They're really excited. They've got all these great New Year's resolutions they want to achieve and accomplish. I think it starts setting in around like mid-November where we start realizing that the new year is on its way and maybe we didn't do things the way we wanted to in the current year. What can we change for the new year? And I want to work on this and keep encouraging you guys so that the thoughts you have now will carry through into the new year and continue to do so. Typically what happens is the first quarter of the year you lose sight of what your uh, dreams were and your goals were and I don't want that to happen to you. And so today's topic is living with intention. Uh, there are three new hashtags that I'm going to be using throughout the year. And I feel they're really important, and I would love to have you guys join me in using them. Uh, I think they're very important. I think that this is something that we should all be focusing on is, um, first and foremost, living with intention. So pound sign, living with intention. What does it mean? How do you live with intention? In my opinion, what that means to me is having the freedom to choose how I want to live, which is part what I do here, living off grid, but also um, it takes it takes time. Uh, you're going to need to take a week or two and really analyze what gives you joy. And I think that the things that give you joy should be the things that you're living for. Uh, we all have jobs that maybe aren't um, something that gives us joy, uh, so it's something that you know is a requirement to help us pay the bills. Now, that could remain as it is, or maybe you have a bigger goal in mind. Maybe there's something you want to achieve. Happy New Year, beautiful. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're excited on this topic, because this is something I'm very passionate about. I have just been really, really soul-searching this for the last two years with being sick, and I've been on a mission for the last three years. Uh, the year before I got sick, I started really slowing things down and really paying attention to my life because I felt it was out of control. I was living uh, with the desire to be busy or thinking that being busy meant that I was accomplishing things where, as you know, it put me flat on my back. Uh, granted, I had other reasons involved, but it was also due to my heavy pushing to be busy and to think that busy meant productivity when it doesn't necessarily mean that. I have been catching myself uh, um, in the trap of sitting in my email box all stinking day. It drives me absolutely bonkers and I realized and I've been really analyzing and paying attention to my time hogs. The time hogs that don't give me joy, the time hogs that are taking me away from the things I enjoy most. And I realized that I check my email all the time. And it's like nothing is that important and nothing is, you know, that urgent that I have to check it that often. So I have put stops in place uh, for my emails. How's that? For real. I'm telling you. You got to do this stuff. You got to catch the ugly. You got to see and be aware of what you're doing and what you would much rather be doing. Um, yesterday, I dug out. I'm going to jump around a little bit here. Um, and thank you, Vicki Lynn, because you sort of put me on a bunny trail, but it's a good one. <laughs> um, I dug out all my leather materials uh, yesterday. I have been trying to make an elk hide, or actually moose, a moose hide pair of moccasins for myself for three years now. And I keep finding excuses or finding things that are more important. And from now on, I am setting a timer that at 3 or 3.30, my office is done. The lights go out in here unless I'm crafting in here in my she cave. 
I'm out of here and I am going to work on making socks for my family and making my elk hide moccasins. And then I'm going to move on to the other things that are on my joy list and my to-do list to do instead of just constantly being in that hamster wheel working. I mean, it's good to be productive. It's good to uh, work. Don't get me wrong. That is what we all should be doing because we're striving for a bigger goal. But realize what your goal is. If your goal is to accomplish things, then it's not sitting in your email box. And it's not sitting on social media or on Pinterest or whatever your vice may be. But what I want you to do is for the next two weeks, really, really pay attention um, to what gives you joy, to your schedule and how you're spending your time. And actually write it down because when you write it down, it becomes more concrete. It becomes... Um, undeniable and um, it becomes something that you can then work off of so my goal is to be uh, living with intention this year and that means that I am going to be doing the things in my day and in my life that I want to do and that means if I have to make special time for it or um, guard it that's what I'm going to do so I'll give you an example my morning starts with God and it is a must because if I don't start my day with God, I find that he's not in my day throughout. Where if I start my day with God, he guides my day and um, they're so much more productive. They're so much more focused. They're so much more centered around the things that they should be. And I just have so much greater direction. Plus, I don't feel like there's something missing in my life and that is just for me it may not be for you but that is how I have to start my day God has worked so many amazing and incredible miracles on our homestead and I can't deny him and that also goes along with the two other uh, hashtags that I have included in today's uh, live video here and that is pound be true number two and then self, so be true to self, and pound be true, number two, Jesus, so pound be true to Jesus. And why? Because that is my goal. That is what I want to accomplish for myself. I want to be true to myself and who I am. I want to, I want to walk the walk and talk the talk no matter what it is I set my heart and mind to and what my goals are. I don't want to be shady. I don't want to um, be unfocused. I want those things to be the center. And being true to Jesus means that, you know, he, he, he came into this world to save us all. And he has continuously saved and blessed my family in ways, oh gosh, I could tell you stories. Uh, yesterday was a Prime example, God blessed us in such an incredibly tremendous way that it brought my husband and I to our knees in tears, happy tears. But God is with us all the time. And the thing is, too, living with intention, um, you know, sometimes we're in rough spots. Uh, I had health issues. Um, right now we're going through a spot and, you know, I have learned to believe that God takes us to these places. I don't feel... You know, it, it, at times I've heard it stated that if you're going through a rough time, it's because you've sinned and you've been awful and you've done something wrong. I don't feel that's true at all. I mean, it can be sometimes that you're just too thick-headed to see the truth sometimes and you keep going through reoccurring situations. That happens. But I truly believe that God takes us to places that might take us to our knees, that may take our feet out from under us. But if we're willing to live intentionally and trust and be in that place knowing that we are where we are supposed to be at, at this given time and be still and hear that small voice that's giving us guidance and direction and telling us to trust because when we trust that's when you see the miracles that is beyond amazing and I think that there's so many people in this world that are in that spot and they get so afraid and they get so fearful and they forget to to remember to trust and they're missing out on those mind-boggling, awing, tear-wrenching, happy tear-wrenching situations that um, are the things that help us grow and the things that take us to the next level and the things that give us this undeniable strength and make us incredible prayer warriors and 
Make us incredible people. Uh, help us to serve others. It's just an incredible place to be, and I wish that for everybody. And like I said, I realize there's people out there listening to me right now that don't necessarily believe in God or a higher power um, and may think I'm kooky, but I'm going to be true to myself. I'm going to be true to Jesus, and I am living with intention this year. Um, my intention is not to, you know, we have to be so careful in being politically correct today, and I think that politically correctness has caused us to just lose sight of so much. And that is being good to others and, and, and realizing that the spoken word, um, such as just something as Merry Christmas, can be misconstrued into such a negative thing when somebody means it in such a happy, nice, positive, joyous way. Um, so my intention is not to insult or um, cause people to run. Um, being true to Jesus is a hard thing because I've weighed this for so long in that... Um... <laughs> Thank you, Vicki Lynn. I appreciate that. Um... <sighs> Being true to Jesus is tough because when you speak the word God and when you speak the word Jesus and you speak faith, even just faith, you know, you've got people that get their haunches up in the air. They have negative things to say. They say you're kooky and nuts um, and they run. And I have worked so hard. We have such an amazing audience and I don't want people to run. In my opinion, the people that might run when I speak those words are the ones I want to touch the most. But at the same time, there's so many other people out there that do believe and need to hear these words. So my prayer for this year is that while I live intentionally, be true to myself and be true to Jesus, that I keep reaching people, the right people, that the words that come out of my mouth are powerful, inspiring, lifting, and help other people get where my husband and I are because when you fully trust and pull into God when there are struggles it it is the most amazing place in this whole world to be so I want to really encourage you to consider these three hashtags this year and consider what is important to you you know um, some of us that are Christians we go to church and while we're there, you know, we do what we're supposed to do. But when we leave and we're with another group of people, we're afraid to even mention those things or touch on certain topics. And I think we're really doing ourselves an injustice. For one, you know, we're not being true to Jesus, but we're also not being true to self. How many of you can relate to this? That when you are in a group of people that you don't feel comfortable speaking about certain things, you leave, you wish you would have for one thing. You wish you would have spoken. Two, you don't feel yourself. You feel inadequate and out of place because you're not being true to your full self. And granted, there are situations where maybe we do need to hold our tongue or be a little more cautious or maybe not be quite as bold and direct. But I'm tired of feeling that way. I'm tired of um, feeling like I'm slighting not only myself but other people by what I could share. So, like I said, I have no intention of insulting people and I pray very hard that the people that are joining me on these things and in our audience are strong enough to, you know, if you're not a believer of God or Jesus, that you at least listen to the other tips that I'm going to share with you today. But this is my most and biggest priority, and I'm sharing it. I'm boldly sharing it because I am proud of who I am. I am proud of my father. Um, you know, it's just an amazing lifestyle for me and for my family. It's a great place for me to be um, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I want to, I want it to be contagious. I want to share this with people because, you know, we've made it through some extremely rough spots. Uh, I almost lost my life to this illness. We went six and a half months without an income. Um, I'm going to share a little boldly right now. We, we lived with the illusion that we were getting ahead this year when in truth we were just beating ourselves to death to chase that mighty dollar and ended up right back where we started from. Um, and, and at no fault of anybody's, at no fault of our, our own, you know, we are striving just like everybody else. We're no different than you. We are no different than you. We go through struggles. We go through tough times. But the thing is, I found such grace and such joy and such amazing power 
in trusting. And um, sometimes in our vulnerableness and um, in our transparency, I think we can help other people. And that's what I want to do. Like I said, right now we're not in a good spot. But it's amazing that in this, in this bad spot we're in, we keep pressing in. We're being true to ourselves, we're being true to Jesus, and we are living with intention, and we are learning to slow down and listen to that small, silent voice that is giving us direction and trying to help us when we're too stubborn to slow down. So what I want to encourage you guys to do is to slow down. Pay attention. I love you, girl. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Becky. So glad to have you guys joining me today. And I would love your input. I mean, um, what are some things that you have found over the years? Um, what are some things that you're striving to do this year to accomplish that you've maybe made multiple attempts and um, have failed? We all do. We try to lose weight each year. We try to slow down. We try to live intentionally. And, and we start off so good, but we peter out. And the thing is, is... When these things are important to us and we are focusing on our joy, what we are being true to ourselves for, what we are being true to Jesus for, and, and what we are living for, it makes it a lot easier to make these things important. It makes it a lot easier to guard these things. And I am guarding my family time. I am guarding my time. Um, you know... I love Michael Hyatt. You've heard me talk about him a lot. One of the things that he really empowered me with, at first I, I thought, oh my goodness, how selfish of him. But he said that he puts God first and then he puts himself first and then his family. And I'd never heard it put that way before. But he's got such a smart, smart uh, thought process in that is that if we aren't being good to ourselves, we aren't being intentional. We are overdoing it. We are stressing ourselves out. We are burning ourselves out. What good are we to anybody else? So I want you to live intentionally this year. I want you to not be afraid, if you're a Christian, to mention the word Jesus and God in another location other than being in the church. Happy New Year, Anita. I want you to be true to yourself, even when it's uncomfortable. Do you realize that uncomfortableness and fear are the things, that fine line between jumping over your comfort zone and reaching a tremendous goal and going back and sitting on the couch and, and cheering somebody else on? That fine line of fear and our comfort zone. Fear is what holds you back from stepping out over your comfort zone. So don't be afraid. You know, I look at it this way. What do I have to lose? You know what? I have, I have, you, you don't have anything to lose. Okay, Vicki Lynn is sharing that this year she wants to focus more on serving others, taking care of her kids, and not to take on tasks that take me away from doing these things. No matter how good they are, the main thing I need to do is, let me see now, hopefully I won't lose you. I'm trying to see what Seymour is is there ah it's letting me do it okay the main thing i need to do is grow closer to yes yes and that's just it that's exactly what i'm doing vicky lynn is that when we put our focus on what is most important Hi, good morning chad when we put our focus on what is most important and we guard it and we know that it gives us joy it gives us wholeness it gives us completeness there's nothing greater and when you start guarding that and 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 I've mentioned it before when I was talking about uh, setting goals. I'm going to jump around a little bit here because I have some tips for you today too, not just me rambling on and on. But um, learning to say no was probably one of the hardest things um, I've had to do in this process because I'm a people pleaser. And I thought that by saying, you know, for, for starters, you have a, a, an opportunity come your way. You know that it, it could be a growth thing, that it could help you, that it could that it could, um, for me, help my business. But what I wasn't analyzing, like Vicki Lynn said, is how is that task going to take me away from what's important to me? And it's learning that process, is learning to say no. And no is not a bad word. Everybody associates a no as a bad thing. I think because when we were kids, every time we were told no, it was a bad thing. But no is not a bad thing. No, excuse me, no means that we are being smart enough to take on 
that word no and focus on what's more important to us. And there's gracious and kind ways to say no. All you need to say is when someone offers you something or there's something, an opportunity arises for you, all you need to say is, you know, right now, let me check my schedule. Things are really busy. Let me check my schedule and I will get back to you. That gives you a buffer. You've now created a buffer. And, and if they pressure you, you know, the answer is still the same. I need to check my schedule. I'll get back to you. Don't cave to that pressure because that gives you the opportunity that if it is something good for you, you've had the time to think about it, maybe pray about it, and then make that decision. But if you say yes, and if you're like I am, you know, you want your word to mean something, then you feel like you're stuck having to do that thing where you've given yourself a chance. Maybe it's, you know, I can do it, but not to the full capacity that you want because it'll take me away from some of my uh, current uh, commitments. But by saying no graciously, you give yourself the chance to really analyze it and determine whether it is something that's important for you. And that is living with intention. That is living with your joys and the most important things in your life in the forefront. And I have to tell you, you know, I said I put Jesus first in the morning. I do my devotions and I will, I will tell you that I put it f first in this regard. I don't just map out a half an hour. I have a half an hour mapped out. But if I feel the need to keep reading that what I'm, I'm delving into for that day is more important or that I am gaining from it or, or that God has chosen to talk to me and give me guidance on something, I'll go two hours because I know that what I'm gaining in that time frame will make the rest of the day and the rest of maybe my life beyond amazing. And you got to realize that when God takes you through these rough times, He's taking you through the rough time to take you to something that's going to be bigger and better. I believe that because every step of the road that we've had that has been ugly and grueling has taken us to such amazing, amazing places. And trust me, we're, we're no um, stronger than you are. You know, there are times where it's just like, enough, I can't take anymore. But it's just it's a growing process and I just want to encourage that today because that has been one of the biggest lessons that exactly Chad a hundred percent it has been the biggest learning lesson for me in my life and something else I want to mention is that you know growing up I went through a lot of hit with, uh, life with a lot of hypocritical people um, and we're not supposed to judge people I'm not judging but I want to give an example you know you go to church and um, people are um, the sermon is about serving others and not talking about others being, you know, loving your neighbor as yourself and you could feel God there. The sermon was amazing and he's finished. We hit the back of the church and don't you know, there's people talking about people and not in nice ways and it's in the church and, and I grew up going through a whole series of all kinds of stuff like that. And when I say I want to be true to Jesus, I want to be true to Jesus all the time. And, uh, you know, I've, I've experienced pastors and their wives who, who curse like sailors. And, you know, for me to speak Jesus and to have an audience that may not believe, those are exactly the reasons why people don't believe because they witness Christians making these choices. And we're all sinners. We all make mistakes. But that's one of the reasons I want to be true to Jesus and true to myself. Because in those two sentences, in those two sediments there, by being that and by being that person that I want to be, I may be opening doors for other people to see the truth. And that's what it's about. We need to be disciples. And regardless if that's a disciple in love and serving others, if that's a disciple in choosing Jesus first, we can be disciples in so many ways. And I just want to encourage that because I think that by living with intention, being true to ourselves and being true to Jesus, we are opening those doors. So just keep that in mind. Those are my sentiments today. Now, back to our schedules and how to live with intention without killing ourselves. Because like Vicki Lynn mentioned, and like I said, you know, being busy is great and being productive is great, um, but there is a definite difference between productivity and busy. I explained that earlier by being stuck in my emails and wasting 45 minutes of my life in an email box that does nothing for me, you know, so, and that's throughout my day. So 
when we learn what our time catchers are and our time hogs are, we can start paying attention and eliminating them, putting timers on those things so that if you do need to go to Pinterest to look something up, you have a timer for 15 minutes, a half an hour, so that you're not stuck in there for two hours because you, it's just it's a waste of time and it's going to take you away from the things that are important. Now, you guys might have heard the word margin. Margin is used a lot in finance, um, but in this particular instance, I'm going to I'm going to read something from Paul Chapel, um, the burden bearer who carries your load. Margin is the space between our load and our limits. It is the amount allowed beyond that which is needed. It is something held in reserve for contingencies or unanticipated situations. Margin is the gap between rest and exhaustion. The space between breathing freely and suffocating. And I think that most of us are missing margin. And I'd like to see you guys have margin in your life. So there's a couple examples of how you can put margin in your life. If you're constantly late to things, when you put something on your calendar, give, you know, state that you need to leave the house 15 minutes sooner so that you are already in your mind thinking that you've got to leave then. And that's going to give you an extra 15 minutes that should get you there on time. The other thing is schedule 15 minutes between your activities. And if you are good, uh, oftentimes I am good at getting things done, jam and getting them done. So if I'd have 15 minutes between two projects that I got done on time, I'd have an ha extra half an hour to go for an extra walk, to ride my exercise bike, to lift weights, to read a book, to watercolor, whatever I feel like doing. And that's a really awesome thing. And that's what we're missing. I know it is. I know that that's what 99.9% .9 of us are missing is just that margin and that space to be joyous, that space to do happy things. All right. The other thing is stick to five priorities a day. Now, granted, you've got to um, analyze the amount of time these five priorities take. If you're going to do five priorities on today's to-do list and they all take three hours, um, that's not going to work, right? So... You know, as I say five priorities, remember to focus on the time they're going to take, okay? But don't make your whole to-do list of 20 things all priorities because it's going to overwhelm you and you're going to peter out. You're going to be discouraged because you didn't get things done. I'm also going to write a blog post about this and I'm going to include some links to some Evernote templates. I use Evernote faithfully and you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash Evernote to utilize the same program, but I have created uh, a to-do sheet for myself that I can copy and duplicate every day and move over to the next day, and that way if there's things that I didn't finish, I can work on them the next day. They don't get lost. They don't get forgotten. That's the important part, and that's, I think, also something we struggle with is how to keep track of all this stuff you know, when we don't get it done, to get it done and to not, and that's how our, our New Year's resolutions get lost because kids get sick, um, the boss needs you extra hours, and you kind of lose sight of what was important to you. I want this stuff to be in front of you so that you know what the most important things are and that you can really focus on them, and that's how I do it. I use Evernote, and I use a program called Nosby for my time schedule, which also puts it onto Google Calendar so you can see a month at a shot in all pretty colors because you can color code everything by person, by task, whatever. Um, and that is treyerwilderness.com slash N-O-Z-B-E. The other thing is limit social media and emails as they are time hogs. Um, really, guys, the thing is you got to personally analyze where you're wasting your time. And like I said, focus on a two-week period of really analyzing what you do daily, how you spend your time, how you could spend it more wisely. Awesome, Kimberly. I'm glad you're loving this. Uh, I think we all need work in this area of our life. This has been a struggle for me, and I've been really analyzing things for like seven years, um, going on eight, but the last three I've been really focusing on living with intention. So... Um, I want to really, really, really try to help others with this because I've learned a lot. I've been reading some really amazing books lately um, that have really helped me in my growth. As I mentioned this one last week, Your Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt. Uh, highly, highly recommend that. As you can see, there's sticky notes and this baby's highlighted all through the thing. So you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash your best year ever. Um, Okay, so as I mentioned, I put God first. And here's something that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, 
When you make God your first priority, everything else falls into place much easier. The reverse is often true, too. John Bunyan said, He who runs from God in the morning will scarcely find him the rest of the day. And like I, I mentioned that to you, I feel lost sometimes if I don't start my day that way. And, um, you know, when we put him first, he gives us the wisdom and the strength and guidance we need to move through our day. And, and I think that's so, so important. Um, the other thing is, at the end of your day... I find this really important because when I lay down at night, my head is spinning. And oftentimes I, I come out of my office, I make supper, we eat, and shortly thereafter we go to bed. And it's just, it's too much for me. My, my little pee needs to unwind and, and decompress. So I do a lot of my reading um, before I, I go to sleep. And I know they say the blue lights are not good, but I've often bonked my head with the iPad because I've fallen asleep. Not that the book was bad, but that's how I... Just bring myself down, and I gain a lot that way, too, because uh, I don't normally get a lot of reading time throughout my day. So, at night, what I'm going to recommend that you do is kind of do a brain dump. I, I do that every night in my current to-do list, at the bottom of my to-do list, before I duplicate it, I do my brain dump, and I explain to myself important points for maybe tomorrow. I uh, write in other to-dos that I forgot about or that uh, came about as of the day so that when I wake up in the morning, I don't have to scurry and create a list or panic that I forgot something. It's already there. And I can get up, I can get my coffee, I can slowly get into my day, which is huge for me. I've always been one who gets out and just goes. I can't do that anymore with my illness. My body needs to wake up. My body does not function as it used to so I need to address my day slowly and by doing so it's just such a it's a joy I love it I love my new routine and that's the thing you need to create a routine that works for you um, if you have children or small children um, hey Mike good to see you um, if it's hard when you have young children trust me I had two. I have two children uh, my daughter is 24, my son just turned 21, my baby is 21. Good Lord, how did that hap happen? Um, Holly, good morning. And I went through that. I went through that shuffle. I was a stay-at-home mom, um, and I, I worked from home when my kids were young. So I know the shuffle. I know what it's like. Um, working from home can be a little more of a struggle. I, Like I said, i got to set a timer to get out of, out of the she cave. Otherwise, I will just keep moving on because I'm on a good roll. I could get this, that, and the other thing done. But to create my margin and to live with intention, I need to set a timer, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm also going to confess something. It's really important, um, in addition to creating that list, um, and just giving yourself that, creating your day the night before. Sometimes we need to put a little bit of effort into things. Um, sometimes we need to maybe change our, our ways. Maybe that might be an inconvenience for you. But I tr trust me when I say that if it's an inconvenience for you now and you go ahead and do it, I, I guarantee you your days will be better because of it. And here's another way your days can be better. And this is how I'm going to confess. I thought this was really funny. In reading Michael Hyatt's book, he had an app for water. Now, for water consumption. I struggle with drinking enough water. Unless I am like really hot and or have just worked out, water doesn't taste good to me. And we have amazingly good well water. But it's just not something I can drink by itself. And, I, and coffee dehydrates. Um, I drink a lot of herbal teas that are decaf. So that is a, a huge uh, liquid for me. But I've been really forcing myself to drink my water and to carry it around and to make sure I'm getting enough. And the other thing is I can guarantee you that majority of you are not getting enough water. Um, the app that Michael used was actually like a gaming kind of app. It, it went along with a plant that when he got water, his plant would grow. It was just a little much for me. I'm like totally, I guess being off the grid, I just can't associate at all with games. But I can associate with an app that is, gives me analytics. So I switched to another water app. I'll put that in the description later on. But that has saved me so much because it gives me reminders to make sure that I'm drinking enough water. Or if I haven't recorded my water it and, and time was due, it, it reaches out to me. And that has saved me so much. My body is running so much better. Um, I have to be a little careful because of the levels of detoxifying that I'm doing. But it's, it's, 
it's an important thing. We need to be hydrated. Our bodies don't work well if they're not hydrated properly. Our organs don't work well. So if you're sick or you're detoxing, all the more reason that you need to drink water. So that's another key thing to living with intention and, and having a clear head, a clear mind, a, a good health. Okay, the other thing that goes hand in hand with that is a good night's sleep. Many of us, if we have the option of doing something productive or sleeping, we'll go for the productive. You need to focus on your sleep. At least eight hours. Um, my body works best with like seven and a half, excuse me, seven and a half hours of sleep. And you need to figure out what works best for you. The mountain man, he needs a lot more sleep than I do. He's a lot more physically active and is using his body very hard every day, so it's important for him to get more sleep. So consider those things. The other thing I recommend is to unplug once a week. And I mean unplug from the internet and everything else and just exist. Um, I like to do that on a Saturday or a Sunday or sometimes both. I will just unplug and go into the woods, do things that I love to do without the distraction of noise and things and stuff going on. And I'll tell you what, it is such a growing time. It's, it's, I love being outside. I would so much rather be outside. So consider that. And reading good books is really valuable. Um, they help. I read a lot of knowledge-based books, whether it's bushcrafting, traditional living, um, books like Michael Hyatt's for, um, self-improvement. I love those books, but it's also good to read a good novel and to just escape into places that, you know, our mind, we, we don't let our mind go to. So reading a good novel is always good too. And like I said, I love to read at night. Um, it puts me off to sleep. I sleep well. I sleep rested. I wake up. I'm refreshed and I've got my to-do list waiting for me. So these are things that I feel are important. Um, we can talk more about planners and different things like that that will help get you organized, but my biggest thing for right now and my, my uh, homework for you is to spend the next two weeks and really pay attention to where you waste your time. Uh, and what are the things that give you joy? What are things that you used to do that are so very much missing in your life? Um, some of you used to paint before children. Some of you used to ride bike or hike or whatever it was. Think of those things. Think of those things that might be missing because you got so caught up in things. Yes, very much so, Chad. God gives us a Sabbath day and tells us to rest for a reason. It's a heart issue. It certainly is. And, you know, that's another thing that our family has uh, focused on very hard. Um, when we were first here and we were uh, building, we were in the cabin and, or a tent and building the home, you know, we, we were pushing because we had, we had to get in before winter. I mean, we moved in our house December 11th on the Mountain Boys' birthday um, in 2010 with a foot of snow on the ground. Um, so we were under some pretty heavy pressure. But the thing is, we should have paused there and got back to what, was, what we knew was right, being true to ourselves, being true to Jesus, and we didn't. We kept pushing on, and, you know, every day was the same. And we finally hit a point where we realized what we were doing and went back to that and to our Sunday, our day of rest, our day of focusing on God, our family, and just chilling. And I'll tell you, it has just been an amazing transformation. And it's so true. And people don't realize that, and, and, and there is reason behind it. And I encourage you guys to do that, too. Thanks for bringing that up, Chad. But... Guys, what are some of your, um, now Vicki Lynn shared hers, what are some of the things you're striving for for the new year? I would love to hear. Um, I am just striving to get margin in my life, uh, to be out of this she cave by a specific time of day, to be doing things um, that I enjoy doing, uh, to be spending more time with my family, both my son and my husband, and um and also uh, paying attention to my health and strengthening this body now. I've gotten it over some humps and I want to now get it uh, re restrengthened. So I got some poles the other day from a friend that I can use with the snowshoes for stability and I'm going to be starting to climb some mountains to strengthen my legs and that'll help strengthen my arms too plus I'll be carrying a pack just for the weight. So. We all have goals. We all have different goals. And some, you know, and don't feel bad if you don't have any. 
at this point, I just want you to focus on what gives you joy and make sure that you're living in happiness. Some of you might have already figured all this out, and then you should be sharing with us and giving us tips and tidbits. But guys, I hope you gain from these, these uh, live videos. I am so thankful. This is the second one in a row, knock on wood, that we haven't had any um, heavy-duty breakups here, and um, it stayed going. So I really appreciate you guys joining me. And today was... Today was pretty um, bold, but I really, I really feel very strongly about this for me. And because of how I feel and what I'm striving for, I'm going to say a prayer for you guys today. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for our audience. I thank you for all of them taking time out of their busy days where they're trying to find margin and, and balance to share time with me. And dear Jesus, I know that they are all struggling in different ways. We all struggle and we all need prayer. So dear Jesus, just lift them up. Give them the tools they need to have a powerful new year. May they stand true to themselves and true to Jesus and, and, and live with intention in ways that they need to and, and find their focus and their balance and their happiness, Lord, because happiness and joy come from you and finding balance in that is key. So, dear Jesus, I just thank you. Lift them up. Give them a good new year. Give them an awesome day and rest of their week and thank you and bless them for being here. In Jesus' name, amen. So guys, embrace this week. You are a strong person. I think I showed you the notes I have up on my chalkboards. You know, sometimes we say negative things to ourselves that deter us from maybe striving to live with intention or being true to ourselves. And I want to really, really encourage you to write those things down. Oh, the things are going fast. I don't know if I can scroll it back down. Ah, thank you, Vicki Lynn. I am healing, and I, I'm glad that you enjoyed this today, and I'm, I'm really glad that you were here. I love you dearly. And Chad says, oh, there we go, to obey and to press into God, fully listening and obeying the Spirit, praying for you guys. Thanks, Chad. Thank you so much. And, and guys, you know, don't be embarrassed if you are a believer. Don't be afraid to be a disciple. Don't be afraid, maybe if you don't feel comfortable mentioning Jesus or God in the presence of people, let it be seen in your actions, all of your actions. You know, if you're at the grocery store and, and there's an older woman in front of you, help her. If, she dro if somebody drops something, you know, pick it up for them. You know, there's so many little things we can do. And, and when you're true to yourself and you're true to God, it does shine. And it's a contagious thing, I pray. I pray that I'm as contagious as ever today because I'm speaking truth. I'm speaking how I feel. And I, I just want to see you guys um, find this fullness that comes from what we're doing. And, you know, it's not just living off the grid. It's, it, there's just so much more to the freedoms we can find in life if we allow ourselves to. We have a freedom that many countries don't. And, and I want to use that freedom. And I want to be bold in it. And I want to help others. And I want to serve others. And, and we have had the opportunity this winter to serve other people in some great ways. And it is such an amazing thing. And when you serve other people, you're not just serving them. You're serving yourself. You're refreshing yourself and fulfilling something in you that you need to be a better person, to strive, to be happier, and to find your joy. So, guys, I really, really treasure you. I thank you for taking time out of your busy days. And I wish you a wonderful day and week. And I will see you next Wednesday at 1030. God bless.